for tuning in to WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network. This is Financial Confidence, and I am your host, Lynn Demons. We invite you in every single week on Thursday so that you can tune in to our episodes. Whether you're watching us live on Facebook or you're listening to the podcast, we appreciate you over here at WYTV7. Thank you for joining in for this episode where we'll be talking about a little bit about business. We're going to change it up just a little bit and we're going to give you the five must have to for startups, right? If you're thinking about starting up a business, what are the five things that you must have? And you say, wait a minute, Lynn, I thought you were doing a financial confidence show based on biblical principles. Well, we are guys, we got something in store for you, so don't miss it. All right, but before we get started, our guiding principle for this show is Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's right, guys. Seek him first in everything that you do, in your life, in your finances, in your relationships. That's what we should do first it, to ensure that we're moving from the curse to the blessing. Also, guys, we ask that you pray, pray over your finances, commit this simple prayer to memory so that you can level up in your finances as well and do what you're called to do. So if you will, bow with me. Lord, help us to value the things in this world that's really valuable. That's our relationship with you, our lives, and our families. Help make us responsible stewards of our financial resources. And let us trust the Holy Word. In the name of our son, Jesus, your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Glory. God, thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining us here for this episode. And I wanted to share with you, this is a broadcast that I've previously um, had where I've shared during a venue. And I thought, hey, what a great opportunity to share these five must-haves with my listening audience here at Financial Confidence on WYTV7. Hope you enjoy. Stay tuned a business, but exactly how to do that, you haven't quite figured that out. So we're going to start talking about this through the lens of entrepreneurship tonight, okay? So from the perspective of entrepreneurship, I told you there were five things that you must have. The first thing or number one thing that you must have is faith. And when I say faith, you must have faith you must be committed to the point that you can do this. You must understand that this is your God-given destiny. That's how relentless you must be in the conviction that you have in regards to this, making this happen, being successful in this entrepreneurial journey, being successful in starting your own business. Now, when I say that, let me backtrack for a moment. I'm not saying that you start a business to leave your job. If that's what you wanna do, that's what you do. But I'm saying that you can do this in addition to your job. Why is that? Because many times on these jobs, on our nine to fives, they're more than likely not paying us what we're worth, right? You've gone in, you've asked for the raise, you beg boss, master, master, can I have a raise? Well, maybe, maybe not like that. But you've gone in and you've asked for the raise and they haven't given you that raise. They're not paying you essentially what you work, what you're worth. And I'm, I'm speaking from a place of, I know that, right? I've been in that situation. So I had to figure out what it is that I can now do that's going to allow me, that's going to supplement the income that I currently have. So opening a business has been able to provide me that opportunity, but I could not start without having faith. And the F in faith is you must fix your eyes. Fix your eyes on the prize is ultimately what I'm saying to you because failure and you're going to fail. Things you're going to do some things and things are not going to work out. But what I need you to catch and understand is that failure is temporary. It's a temporary place that you'll be in and it's only for a moment. So make sure that you fix your eyes, you keep your eyes on the prize. The A in faith is you accept, you accept his grace. You have a God ordained destiny inside of you. And if you go back to the question that I shared with you earlier, the question that we should have been asked as a child or the question that we should be asking our children now it's not what do you want to be when you grow up, but what has God prepared you to do in this season, 
right? To fulfill your destiny. So you accept his grace. And then once you accept, you're accepting of the grace, you invite, invite his perception of you into your life. Invite his perception of you into your heart because you were meant to be more, do more, have more because of who he says you are. And then the T in faith is to train, guys. We have to train, you train your lips, right? There is power in your words. And we hear that over and over. There, there's power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So you must train your lips to speak over, we hear it all the time, speak over yourself. So train your lips to speak what it is that you need. Guys, see, that's why you must have faith. And the H in setting up your business, guys, those five must haves. The H in faith is you have to hide, but you hide in his presence. See, once you're inside of his presence, you're inside of his will. And not, it doesn't mean everything's going to be easy. It doesn't mean everything's going to be simple, but everything will be taken care of. So first and foremost, guys, the number one thing that you must have in starting this business is you must have faith. You must be committed and you must be relentless in your steps that you're taking to now achieve that success. So that's the first thing that you must have. So make sure you get that written down in your notes that you must have faith. And, 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 and why do we need so much faith, guys? Becoming an entrepreneur, you got to understand and recognize, is this right for you, right? Because the lifestyle of an entrepreneur is, you know, the personal freedoms that are associated, that are connected with being an entrepreneur are unrivaled by many other jobs. There's flexibility in your schedule. You get to decide what you do. Um, you get to choose who you work with. Perhaps that's the greatest part of working for yourself is you get to choose who you work with. I dare you to go into your job tomorrow and say to your boss that, hey boss, I don't like her. I don't wanna do business with her. He'll say, well, get over it. She's a part of the team and you have to go do that. But once you move into this realm of starting your own business, of coming in, be, becoming an entrepreneur, you can decide, decide who you do business with. And then ultimately the financial rewards, it goes back to the conversation that we were talking about earlier. You can go to your job today and ask your boss for a raise, but does that mean that you're going to get it? Oftentimes, I mean, it depends, right? It depends on the different performance measures that they have at that job. But when you're the business owner, you have the ability to control how much you earn, right? When you want to make more money, you simply work more efficiently so that you can now make more money. So there are some perks that come along with entrepreneurship. Also, guys, tax benefits. Another thing to consider, there are several tax benefits that business owners enjoy that the traditional employee cannot realize, right? So this helps you to do what? Keep more of your money. That's the tagline, make your money, keep your money, grow your money. So the tax benefits allow you to keep more of the money that you earn. And guys, the last thing that I wanna share here is the growth of your skill set. When you become a business owner, it means you're responsible for everything that happens within your company. It completely shifts your mindset to a, a, a different level. So it, it challenges you. It's not the same mundane thing that you're gonna get all the time. But the question I put on the table, is it right for you? Because it's not all a bed of roses. Because sometimes there's financial insecurity in being an entrepreneur, right? Because there are ebbs and flows. You got to take the rough with the smooth. And owning your business is no different. You have to understand that just like there are seasons that we go through, winter, summer, spring, and fall, there are seasons that you go through inside of your business where there will be income coming in and income will not be coming in as much. So you'll have to be able to be able to deal with that type of financial insecurity. And another downside to consider health insurance. 
employee health plans and those other benefits that you get in a regular nine to five job, that's your responsibility now. And it can reduce your bottom line. So these are all different things you got to think about as you're moving through this journey. Now you can continue to stay in your job and work your business. I'm not saying that you cannot do that. But if you're gonna go full blown in becoming an entrepreneur, you need to think about these things on a regular basis. And decisions, decisions. You are the sole decision maker. That's a key benefit of entrepreneurship. But it's also a negative. You are the sole decision maker, right? All of the decisions of the business fall to you. So you have to be able to understand, is this truly for me? Is this what I really want to do? And in the case of my business, I'm what, what's called a social entrepreneur. And a social, social entrepreneur starts their business, um, they, they do well by doing good, right? And the business earns money while also making a difference. I'm helping others to make their money, keep their money, and grow their money, right? as a result of doing good, providing empowerment along the lines of financial literacy. So would you become a social entrepreneur? That's something else to put on the table. So that was number one, guys. You must have faith. The number two item that you must have in a business is knowledge, right? You have to get in the habit of creating you have to know what the pros and cons are of you starting your business. And you have to read, 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 read. Why do I say that? Because knowledge is power, guys. And there are oftentimes a lot of things that we were not aware of, that we were not privy to, conversations that you were not in on at your job or at corporate America or in retail, wherever it is that you land, right? that you were not privy to a lot of those different conversations. But owning your own business, you must develop an entrepreneurial mindset, right? You have to be someone who's imaginative. You have to be able to see the big picture, study and evaluate trends. And I know a lot of people will say, oh no, I'm not a numbers person. Well, you must become a numbers person if you want to be successful. Creative, you must be risk tolerant. You have to be motivated because you're gonna go up and down just like a roller coaster on this journey as you're starting your business. And you have to be able to maintain the course when things are going good, when things are going bad, when things are going sideways, up, down, any type of way that it goes, you have to be the one who understands your strengths and knows where your weaknesses are and then get some people around you to fill in the gap where those weaknesses lie. See, in that entrepreneurial mindset, you allow yourself now, right, to be goal-oriented. You have to be honest. You must be a learner. You must be persuasive. You must be organized. There's so many different pieces to the puzzle that have to come together when you're starting a business. So come uh, into this with the mindset that, hey, there is no box, right? Oftentimes we'll say, oh, we can't even see our way outside of the box. Or some, we hear people say, think outside of the box. I want you to get rid of all of that because from now on, there is no box. In this entrepreneurial mindset, on this entrepreneurial journey, you have to now say there is no box. So what am I now creating? This is the blank space. This is the canvas now that you have access to when you start your own business. So that's number two, guys. You gotta get the knowledge, get the understanding that you need. The number three thing, and if there are questions, feel free to post those in the chat if you have them. Um, I'm checking over here, I don't see any questions, but I do want to remind you to go over to the chat, um, pull down the actual document that I've shared with you, this is the checklist that I promised, the get off the bus, the five must haves to start your business. In that chat, you can go ahead and download that to your uh, laptop, to your smartphones right now so that you have it. This information that I'm sharing with you is also available in that document. So number three, the number three thing that you see here, guys, is you must have a strategy. 
And when I say you have to have a strategy, the essence strategy is your status. Where's your status right now? Where are you now in this journey, right? What does it look like for you right now? By identifying your status, by identifying what it looks like for you right now, it puts you in a position where you can say, all right, this is where I am, but this is where I would like to be, okay? And once you have that set up, now you can go to the T in strategy, it is to think. You sit down with a pen and a paper and you think about the situation that you're in as far as your strategy is concerned. If this is where I am and this is where I need to be, think about the things that you need to do and make a list of pros and cons uh, in regards to those items, the things that you need to do, whether it's things you already know, things that you want to know, things that you need to learn. It does not matter. Take the opportunity now so that you can strategize it out. Then the R in your strategy is to relook. Yeah, I know, I kind of made up that word, but relook, <laughs> relook at the information that you pull down from the pros and cons and pick some quick wins. Why? The low hanging fruit is what we call it, right? Think about it. You go out to a tree, go out to an apple tree, and you want to get some apples from that tree. What are you going to do? You're going to look for the branch that's closest to you so you can just reach up, pick that apple, and go ahead and eat it. The same thing that I want you to do with your list here so that you can take action, so that you can act. That is the A in your strategy. So that you can act now. Find the low-hanging fruit in your list of pros and cons so you can get some quick wins on your side. Those quick wins are going to give you the momentum that you need to now keep going. Once you have that in place and you know that you're going to be able to act now, set a target. That's the T in your strategy. You must set a target. I, will, I want to be in this place by this date. Three months down the road, I need to have A, B, and C done. Six months down the road, I need to have X, Y, and Z completed, right? What are my revenue goals? What are the things I need to be looking at? Once you go through and decide that you set your targets, now you go to the E, you evaluate. So how well have I done? Are these things working out that I've now put into place, right? The G in your strategy is, okay, if I've evaluated, it looks like things are gonna work out, so let me go implement. Let me go do the work. And finally, the why in your strategy are those things yet to be considered because they are roadblocks that are going to come. There are things that are going to happen. So what do I need to consider? What happens when, right, this thing pops up, this unknown pops up that I had no inkling that it was there? How am I going to respond to that opportunity? By having a strategy, you now become proactive in this situation as opposed to being reactive to your situation. And by being proactive, it positions you in a different way to continue to win. Guys, these are the five must-haves to start a business. And in order to be successful, you follow this path so that you can move to your next. And in starting a business, one of the easiest things, one of the easiest strategies today because of smartphones, because of the internet, is to start an internet-based business. On this slide, you see it printed clearly. Anyone can start a business and earn income. The internet has opened up the world of global commerce to anyone, not just big corporations. You don't have to be Walmart or Target or Facebook, right? to start an internet-based business. That's where Demis Enterprise comes from. DemisEnterprise.com is an internet-based business. Why? Because I have my products, my resources, and everything available via the net. Yes, people can talk with me in person. Yes, we do workshops face-to-face. -face. However, there are also opportunities. You're engaged right now. You're engaged with me via the internet because I'm providing this class in this way. So it's not just for the big corporations anymore, guys. There are significant opportunities out there for all of us because of the internet, Facebook, YouTube, Google, Twitter, Instagram, 
all those other things, right? <laughs> all of the other communication platforms out there. So we can take advantage of what's available to us. The number four, the number four thing that you must have, and make sure you write this down, you must have a plan. We've all heard the saying, if you plan to fail, <laughs> right? No. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail, <laughs> right? I almost said that all wrong. But yes, if you plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And ultimately, that's what happens when you don't start with a plan. A plan A, B, and C, as you see printed on the screen. But what does it mean to have a plan? The P is to prepare, right? You must prepare for this process because you can't just jump out there. Um, I recall going to a workshop, my husband and I, and um, the guy, he was standing on the stage and he said, do you want to start a business? He said, well, what's the name of your business? And he said, write the name of your business down on the paper. And then his next statement was, you've written it down on the paper? We were like, yes. He said, like, okay, you're in business. We're like, what? So, so he was trying to make a point. However, that's not the best way to go about, right? Setting things up. You have to prepare. You need to get the, uh, the knowledge that you need. You need to get a coach, get somebody else, get, the, get to reading, whatever the case may be. Do the things that you need to do to prepare. The next is leadership, okay? Not only leadership for you, because you are the sole decision maker of the organization, of the company, but then who is the leaders that you are going to follow? Who are those people who've had success in their businesses that you can now look to? As Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues. And there are clues out there for all of us that we can now take and actually implement and go follow those clues. Why would you go through and try to hack your own path when a path has already been hacked that you can simply just follow the footsteps? So leadership is of utmost importance. Leadership in you as an individual, as well as the leadership of others that you would like to, dare I say, mimic, right? Or in some shape, form, or fashion, bring those on so that you can now uh, follow in those footsteps. The A in plan is action. And I'm sure this goes without uh, needing to be repeated. However, I shall repeat it. You must take action. It will do absolutely no good for those of you who are here on this broadcast, on this webinar, to come here and not take action to the next steps, not move forward in the implementation of the information that you're getting tonight, right? these five steps that are going to help you set the stage so that you don't have to go out here and say, well, I have no clue of where I need to go, what I need to do. I'm just going to, all right, that's it. It's over. Chances are 80% of people do that. That's the problem. That's why failure happens. Only 20% of people follow through. So put yourself in the 20% tonight. That's what I'm saying. Put yourself in the 20% so that you are now, know it without a shadow of a doubt. Say to yourself right now, I will take action on the information that's been given to me. Whether it's I take action, and, and the number one way to take action is when you leave this webinar, is to go and sit down and write immediately go back through your notes immediately, right? Go back through your notes, go back through everything that we've discussed, read it over. And don't just go back and read it after this meeting tonight, go back and look at it for the next seven days. I'm challenging you right now to go back and look at the information over the next seven days and devise your plan. And the last thing that you need, the last part of your plan, guys, is your network. And we've all heard the saying that your network is your net worth. Who are you connected to? Who are those people that are game changers for you in your life? 
who are those individuals that are going to be there who are going to be able to help you to decide and take action towards those next steps? Who can you go and talk to when you say, hey, wait a minute, I've run into a problem and I don't quite know how to respond to this. Who can you go to? Your network is your net worth. So if you're not surrounded by the right people in your network who are going to help you to get to the next, then you know what you need to do. Get some more people, right? Get some additional people in your network who are going to now help you to get to your next. So in having this plan, you say, okay, right, that sounds good, Lynn. I am definitely going to start an internet-based business, but what can I do? I'm glad you asked. There are so many different internet-based models that exist out there that you can start with today. First is affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing is a concept where you can start a business, but you don't start a business with your products. You can start a business with products out there that already exist. For example, uh, my Financial Confidence Now Academy, you say, wait a minute, hey, Lynn, can I help you sell Financial Confidence Academy? Will you give me 20% of each sale that I get? And I would say, absolutely, yes, right? So affiliate marketing is an opportunity for you to start a business and you can go out there and start selling other people's products. Uh, the next type of internet-based uh, business is called click and mortar right you know brick and mortar means you have a physical building but click and mortar means that now all of your material all of your content all of your courses all of everything that you offer is now available via the web so a person can come to your business and purchase things via the web another internet-based business model guys is just content advertising Content advertising is where you could start a blog post tonight, right? You start a blog and other people will pay you to put their ads in your blog space. And every time someone comes in and click, you get a certain amount or a certain, say you get 10 cents per click for every person that comes in and clicks on that ad. So you negotiate with that advertiser, with that company, with that entity, right? in regards to that opportunity. There's e-commerce, we see that all the time. I'm sure you've bought things on Groupon, you've bought things on eBay. There are opportunities, you can start your business by going onto those platforms, taking pictures of your items, posting them up and selling them. Or you can post your things on Amazon, there's so many different opportunities. E-commerce is simple, you've probably been doing that, you probably did a lot of that today, it's Cyber Monday, probably did a lot of that today. There's also incentive marketing or pay for performance. And pay for performance is based upon the number of sales of a particular product that you give for someone. And a lot of companies do this, this incentive, incentivize marketing or pay for performance. And that gets back to the clicks. So you see these uh, kids who have the YouTube channels, right? And there are ads on those YouTube channels. So every time someone comes in and clicks on that ad, then they're paid that way for that YouTube channel. You can monetize anything. That's what I'm telling you today. Monetize everything. You can even monetize your Facebook page if you wanted to. You just have to think outside of the box into ways that you can get people to now pay you to do that. You can start a business. And guys, the number five thing, I get so super excited, but the number five thing, guys, the number five thing that you need to start your business now is technology. And I've heard so many people say, well, I don't know about that technology thing. I'm not used to that. I can't, I don't know. It's easier than you think, okay? It just takes someone showing you, sharing with you, what are those things that you need to be utilizing? WordPress, GoDaddy, Constant Contact, PayPal, social media, uh, SEO. It's like, what is all of that? It's all this jargon. What are these things that I need to know that are going to help me to build my business so I can be successful? I'm glad you asked. If you are ready, tonight, you can go to WordPress and start a website for free. 
you can go to WordPress, create your website tonight for free. GoDaddy is another platform that actually can host your website. You will be paying for them to host your website. You can also have an email account. Constant contact. Several of you received emails from me because you're on my email list. Constant contact allows me to be able to do that where I only have to create one email and then it goes out to everyone. I don't have to sit there and write individual emails to people. In PayPal, easy way for you to start accepting payment now. You're in business, you need to be able to do that. Set up a PayPal account so you can do that. Put the link on your website. Now people can start paying you through your website and you don't even have to do anything about it, right? Because it's automatically connected. That PayPal account is connected to your bank account. Cha-ching, all you'll get is email saying that money has been deposited into your account. <laughs> Doesn't that sound lovely? You can also use your social media, guys. That's where your advertising and your marketing comes in, different opportunities. No, nothing's better than word of mouth, but these are also components because of the, the way that things are today. Technology is a must in your business. And if you're not utilizing tech technology, then you're sleeping and a huge opportunity to now grow your business. <laughs> Make your money, keep your money, and grow your money. So how do you get started? These are your steps. You can start tonight. Step number one, get a domain name. My domain name is Demons Enterprise. Is, right? Go out there, create your domain. Your domain could be SamiraAnderson.com. Your name could be Business investments LLC.com. It's, it's whatever you choose, as long as that name hasn't been taken up by someone else and you can register it in your state, then you are clear. Step two, set up a website. I told you already, WordPress.com. Go to WordPress, set up a free website. Go out there and practice right now. Just set up a website on something. Maybe you want to set up something for your church or set up something for the Boys and Girls Club or Girl Scouts, whatever, right? Just go in there and practice and set it up and see how easy it is. Guys, you can do this. And then the step number three, guys, make your business look big. Go in there and put things on there professionally. Make sure that you go in and do the edits and make the changes and things that you need. Use great pictures. There are places on the website where you can get free pictures. Pixabay gives you free pictures that you can now upload to your website that makes everything look beautiful. Step four, you must dress, act, and look the part. Just as if you were going into corporate America to go in and talk to the guys uh, on Wall Street, right? You do the same thing for you and your business. Step five, you set up a payment process. We've already talked about that with PayPal. Please do not use Cash App, okay? I know we see a lot of that on social media, but Cash App is not the way to go when you're doing business. Cash App is not a legitimate business processing uh, payment form, okay? It's not a business payment processing form, all right? And then step number six is to market your business. Guys, if you don't tell anybody about your business, <laughs> then your business is closed, all right? So you must market your business. You must have the self-confidence to get out there, tell people about your business, show people what you have, and continue to work. Guys, I wanna take a moment to pause for a second to see how we're doing. Are there any questions? Did anyone post any questions in the chat feature? Let me see. I don't want to make get too far. Oh, okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for sharing the information. Good. All right. Okay. All right. So I'll continue, guys, to a couple of things, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut it off for calculating risk. The key to being a successful risk taker, guys, there's some things that we, def we def definitely need to ensure is that we're not being too critical, right? 
perfect is the enemy of good. And I know this without a shadow of a doubt. I was Miss Perfectionist over here. Everything had to be perfect before I pushed anything out. But if you consistently wait on things to get perfect, you'll never get anywhere. You'll, things will never get done. So push that perfection piece out the window, right? And don't give in to your fear. Remember, fear is false evidence appearing real. Fear is a very real thing, but it has no place in decision making. It gives you these false signals, right? That keep you from taking any risk at all. The number one thing here, guys, is once you've gone through, and I'm not saying do not calculate the cost, please. Hear me and hear me well. You do need to calculate the cost. You do need to do the assessments, but you do then you go for it. You look at other successful people. As I mentioned earlier, Tony Robbins said it best, success leaves clues, but you must be willing to do the work. You must be willing to do the work to make your business work. So when you're looking at the social, social entrepreneurship, right? When you're looking at a social enterprise, one similar to Demons Enterprise, the number one thing that you must do is do the research, conduct market research, figure out your financial projections and a timeline for your business. Guys, the beauty of this is you don't have to recreate the wheel. Find a business that is similar. Find a business with a similar business model to what you have, right? And then go out there and see what some of their projections are. How are they doing business? Then you can identify what it is that you need to get started. The Avenger. Or go online and Google what, what are the components of a business plan. It's all there. Once you have that, then you develop your marketing plan. Participate in seminars and webinars like this. Go to trade shows. Get into classes that are beneficial for you and your business. There's no reason for you to go out here and to try to do it all alone, is what I'm saying. And review your progress every week. Come back to it day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, year in and year out. And you update and revise your goals, your strategies and your business plan as needed. If something's not working, it's okay, change it. And the last thing, guys, just keep it simple. Pick two or three things, right, that you need to work on that day. Yeah, you'll have a to-do list of 10, 15, to 20 things. Trust me, I know. But pick the two or three things that matter most for that day. What are the two or three things that are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck? And work on those things. Then once you get this thing rolling, you're going to start needing new people. You're going to start needing people to come in and help you. And then you can start delegating some of those tasks, right? Delegating some of those tasks out. But for right now, when you get this thing started, it's you. You call a consultation and we'll get you started. Guys, thank you so much for joining tonight. And we look forward to seeing you ha, as you get off the bus. Have a great day. guys we trust that that was invaluable information for you yes over here at financial confidence we're helping you make your money keep your money and grow your money so you can do what you're called to do that's to leave an inheritance for your children's children yes indeed build generational wealth and leave that inheritance for the kiddos guys can't take it with you so why not prepare yourself so that you can leave that for someone else also guys we ask that if any of this information has been helpful to you whether it's been entertainment, education, you name it, make sure you, you're sharing this out. But most importantly, go over to WYTV7.org and leave a donation. Also want to let you know, we'll be hosting a financial literacy workshop in the Charlotte, North Carolina area in April. So if you are interested in supporting this great endeavor, and you would like to sponsor someone or maybe even an organization to attend the event, Make sure you connect with us over at WYTV7.org. We thank you so much for tuning in for this episode. Don't forget to share it out because sharing is caring. And we know you care about your community. Help someone else level up today. Thank you again for joining in. Make your money, keep your money, and grow your money.
All right. Finances in a rut? Need a way out? Lynn Demons is here to help. She's your personal financial rebound coach. Being a wife, mother, and educator, she understands the importance of controlling your finances and building generational wealth. She is here to help you find money you didn't know you had and live life on your terms. Sounds too good to be true? Well, it is true and it's definitely a good thing. Lynn Demons of Demons Enterprise offers one-on-one... 